Uh, so welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we're gonna take a look at some of the frequency functionality within these process calibrators here. Uh, the SG-004A and the MR9270S can both measure and source a frequency signal. The SG-003A here can only source a signal. It doesn't have any measurement capability. And the LB02 here doesn't have any frequency functionality whatsoever. Um, the LB02A from Brightwin Electronics does have frequency, uh, both measurement and source functionality built into it, but not this unit. Um, so we're set up with our little Regal uh, function generator here just sourcing one color signal. So we just zoomed into the screens to give a bit better picture here. To set the SG-004A up to read frequency, we can go to the function, select in, and we've got the Hertz tab up here. And then we've got a number of these little elements down here, pulse, PWM, speed, or count. Uh, you can set a rising or falling, or rising and falling together. And you can look at level coming in, or a switching function coming in. Uh, again, you have the range functionality, so you can convert this to engineering units if you want to. And uh, specifically for the speed setting, you can set RP, H, RPM, RPS, and then the number of pulses per turn down there. Um, so that's already set up just on the first one here, just to read the frequency coming in. And then the MR9270S, Pretty much the same functionality as the SG-004 here. Um, we press the in key and then we can select Hertz as number four there. And then we're, the difference being we're reading down the bottom here on the MR9270S, we're reading at the top here on the SG-004A. But then you hold the in key in to get the menus and we've got the same menu here, pulse, PWM, speed, or count. Uh, voltage input or open circuit in and then counting on the rising, falling or the rising and falling and again we have our range functionality and our speed functionality down at the bottom there to go into. Um, so we're set up, uh, we're putting in one kilohertz as we've seen from the function generator and we are reading 1000 on the SG-04A and 999.96 on the MR9270S and 999 so you can see we've got a better resolution on the MR9270S there in comparison to the SG-004A. Um, it also has a wider range as well, uh, but let's take it up to 7.5 kilohertz. Uh, we don't need to do too much of this because generally speaking, frequency is very, very stable and there's hardly ever any problems with it. Again, 7500, 7499.7 there. Uh, let's take it to 10 kilohertz. Uh, this unit will read 10 kilohertz, uh, 9999.6 on the MR9270S. So, so all well within the plus or minus 2% specification. Um, and this is where the SG-004A will drop off. Uh, if we can remember, if we go up to 11. So there you can see at 11 kilohertz, we've gone overload on the SG-004A and we're reading 10999 on the MR9270S. We've lost decimal points, but we are still getting a reading and we can actually take this up to 30 kilohertz. So if we take this up to 28 kilohertz, you can see we've got 27999. Uh, take it up to 20, oop, not that one. Take it up to 29. And you can see 28998. It's 30, we get the 29, 9 on 9. If we go to 31 kilohertz, we go over range on that one as well. So all well and good with that. I'll stick the plots up so you can freeze the video and take a look at them if you want to see more in-depth results. But as I said, frequency is generally very stable, so I've not seen any issues with either of these two units reading the frequency signal. So I'll move things around and then we'll look at the sourcing capability for the frequency signal on these units and we'll bring the SG-003A into the circuit as well. Okay, so we've reset everything. We are now gonna do some sourcing. Uh, we've changed over to the SG-003A for this since this hardly gets in the videos now. Um, 
to get this to set it up for outputting a frequency, we go function and out. Again, we have our selection down here for pulse, PDRM, speed, and Q pulse. Um, if we go into there, we've got our level or switch in circuit going out there. We've got a range now for the output, and I'm just going to change that briefly down to our 10 kilohertz, and then uh, go back on that. And then this final window down here, this gives the output voltage in a peak to peak voltage level. Uh, you can go from 0.1 all the way up to 24 volts on these units here. Um, frequency output you saw, we can go up to 200 kilohertz. On the Finercy units, on the MR9270S, we can only go up to 100 kilohertz. So we'll go back out of that. Obviously I can only test uh, one unit at a time doing this. We've hooked it up to our frequency counter there. Uh, let's change this up to our 1 kilohertz there, or 1000 hertz. So hit the out button and you can see the general accuracy that we've got there, 1.0000248 uh, kilohertz there, so well within the plus or minus 2% specification there. So that's our 1 kilohertz there. We can obviously move the keys, we can step these up. There's 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, all the way up to 9, and we can only go to 999 hertz on there, uh, which just about gives us 10 kilohertz. Uh, to extend the range, we have to go back in, go to the out, uh, go down, cycle through, and then we can change this to a 200 kilohertz output, uh, function back out again. Uh, and it's actually switched it straight up to 200 kilohertz, but it has actually switched the unit off on this. Whenever you go back in to change the settings in the menu, your output gets turned off, so we need to turn that back on. And there you can see we've got our 200 kilohertz there. And we can page down through this, so there's 100 kilohertz there. Uh, let's go, there's 90 there, and so on. And you can see very, very accurate. Uh, with regard to frequency output on this. And I'll just flip this around and put the MR9270S in. And we can go output there. So on this one, we output again. Again, we can check our hertz there, which is number four. If we hold in the key, we get pretty much the same menu as we do with the other units, if I can get the glare off the screen, uh, better. Okay, it's got the glare off the screen there. Um, you have the pulse, PWM speed, and Q pulse. Again, your frequency selection there, but only up to 100 kilohertz on this unit. And in our peak uh, voltage output there, again, 0.1 up to 24 volts. You can select voltage output or switching output, and then our speed and range settings there. And we can go back, uh, so we are on the one kilohertz again with this one. Turn the output on. Um, we need to actually dial in a frequency, don't we? That would be good. Um, so there's your one kilohertz there. And again, on a counter, you can see 1.000034. Pretty much same sort of accuracy as you see on the Finercy units there. So I'll stick the graph up here for the frequency output and you can see there's very little issue with any of the units. They are all within the spec. You tend to get the worst for the Finercy at around about 199 kilohertz. Gives the most deviation from the nominal. However, it is perfectly fine. There's nothing to worry about. The only thing that I did notice is with the actual output voltage um, on these units when they're in frequency mode. I'll put this plot up here. You can see that down at the lower voltages, you know, one up to sort of five, six volts, you've got quite a significant difference between the nominal voltage and what was actually measured. As you increase the output voltage, that fades away, and at 24 volts, it is pretty good. Uh, and on the SG-003, it actually drops below 24 volts. It can't make the 24 volt output. So I'll share that with the MR9270S here. You can see we're set to one kilohertz output, and we can see we're on 2.34 volts output on the key site unit there. And to do the voltage on this, as I said, we have to hold it in, and then we can get to all the 
the settings that we like, we go down and uh, oops, that one there, need to edit that and you can see here now with this uh, MR9270S you can change the output voltage and the unit will respond, you see it's got 3.4 there uh, let's take him up to there's 10 volts and if you need to just overload him and you can see you've actually got 10 volts output there all accurate no problems uh, take him up to 20 and you can see we're on 20.2 so this unit seems a little bit more accurate uh, than the Finerse units are I'll just put the Finerse unit into circuit and you need to go down to one kilohertz up there and we turn that on and you can see we're reading 2.28 volts on this uh, the same again if we go down on just the voltage now unfortunately this one uh, this will turn off the output when you go into one of these settings and so let's go across uh, let's take the stroke to 12 volts you can see the output's turned off now uh, so I have to turn it back on uh, 12 volts there you can see I'm actually reading 13 volts uh, peak to peak on that one um, take him all the way up to the actual maximum 24 volts There's your 24 volts again we've turned off so go back turning back on and we get 23.8 volts so not quite there but it is close enough really okay so we'll knock this all out of the way and i'll get an oscilloscope set up and we can look at the actual output traces itself and a bit more of the other functionality available we've set up the sg-003a here on the oscilloscope and we are injecting a 1 kilohertz 2 volt peak to peak pulse that you can see at the top the white trace up here and then I've connected up the bottom channel to the standard 1 kilohertz 2 volt peak to peak calibration pulse that's built into the oscilloscope itself uh, we've put some measurements down here at the bottom uh, so you can see the frequency here is 1 kilohertz on both of them uh, rise time, we've got a faster rise time on the Finerse here, uh, 1.3 microseconds against 2.2 for the calibration pulse. Uh, duty is 50% on both of them. Um, amplitude and peak to peak, so when I did the measurements on the key site I said I had issues with the peak to peak voltage and it was 2.34 volts on that and here you can see it's 2.3 volts uh, peak to peak and 2 volts peak to peak for the calibration pulse but if we look at the actual amplitude instead uh, we've dropped to 2.16 volts uh, 1.94 volts and if we look quite closely I'm not sure how well you'll see it on the scope uh, I'll perhaps take some pictures and uh, put them up instead at the top here you've got there's a little bit of interference along the top here that you're not seeing on the calibration pulse and you've got a little spike here at the end of the waveform interestingly enough um, so that could be what's throwing the reading on the key site counter there um, but I don't think it's an overly big issue really out of interest this is the 1 kilohertz 2 volt peak to peak pulse from the MR9270S there um, again frequency is spot on uh, rise time is 5.75 microseconds on this so I'm not as fast as either the calibration signal or the Finerse, uh, duty again 50% as good as uh, amplitude and peak to peak so on the key site this seems to be coming out better than the Finerse's uh, 2.17 peak to peak but the amplitude is 1.88 1.9 and you can see on the screen here uh, screwdriver in so everything is not there you've got some uh, at the beginning of the pulse uh, a dip there and then at the end of the pulse you've got a, uh, another spike there so when you look at things via the scope the Finerse seems to be have a, a bit better output voltage than the MR9270S um, so what this also actually has if we hold this in front of the camera uh, if we go back to our function on our 
output down, third one down, we've got program, and you can set some parameters on this uh, cycle, uh, which is both the up and down, or just the up section or the down section of the cycle. And you've got the number of operations there, start values, uh, stop values, uh, the step to make, uh, the step time, stop time, that's both for the up and then repeated there for the down at the bottom two there. And you can set these and you can produce some slightly different waveforms uh, on the program function to give you some different outputs. Uh, let's go back as well. So to activate these programs, you use the function key and then the auto and then you just hit the on button and it will go up and you see there the pulse going up and then coming back down. Uh, see a bit better there and it'll do that for the five cycles. You can see down at the bottom here, it'll count the number of cycles left. And then when it's done, it just automatically turns the output off. Um, so you've got that functionality built into it. Um, you also have, I didn't mention this, uh, I've just got out, you've also got the preset functions as well. Uh, so if you go down to them, so these are set frequencies that you can put out, activated off whichever one of these you select. Um, so if you go back to them to do the presets, it's function. On the top one, we turn green, and then we can do, uh, that's uh, one kilohertz output. That's uh, 50 kilohertz there. There's your one kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. So you can set them up and you can program them to whatever frequency you would like. Um, what else you can do with the output as well? Uh, so we've programmed the SG-004 slightly differently. Um, if we go through that and take a look at the presets on this one. Um, again, we're using both parts of the cycle, the up and the down cycle. Uh, I've got 50 uh, number of cycles this time around. Our start value is 10. Uh, we've got no stop value. Uh, we've got no step up value, no step up time. Uh, we've just got a stop time there. And then our down step is 10. And then we've got a down step time of 0.1 and stop time of 0.3. Uh, so we can go back to that one and we'll show you what that one looks like. Um, actually on here on the screen you don't see um, an awful lot. You can see it's pulsing up. Uh, with that on there and you see it flickering a little bit but we can also do let's go to function and curve and then you see it performing on the curve as well and if I uh, slow this down a little bit you should hopefully see so you can see there you've got a number of bursts of the pulses coming out um, more of a train of pulses rather than a consistent pulse and it's just switched itself off there um, so you can also do that with it as well so all three of these instruments have exactly the same programming functions on them, so you can do it with all three of them. However, it's not going to replace a proper function generator unit. It's just not meant to do that, so it's unfair to compare it to that. But if you're out in the field and you got a bit stuck, you do have this capability built into them, so it might get you uh, out of trouble. Uh, you never know. Um, so we also have on these functions that... Uh, I haven't gone through on these videos. If we go back to these, uh, we have the pulse that we've done. We've got PWM, which I'll do in the next video. Uh, we have speed, which I kind of covered when I did the inverter drive for the three-phase motor, so I may not do one on that one. Um, and then we have the Q pulse, which I can do in another video as well. So we've got those other functions to look at. Um, but that'll be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next one.